a warm welcome to our guests, <laughs> our media colleagues, our business partners, and welcome me fans. To tell you a quick story, when we started to plan this event, we said, let's try to see if we can get a really big auditorium style venue. And this was the biggest one we could get. And then we came in here and we said, boy, it's really big. So let's just use the seats downstairs. Everybody's going to get cozy and, you know, have a good time. And then we got 12,000 registrations for me fans in just a few days. It's crazy. You know, and many of you traveled from all around India. You took time off from work. You took time off from school just to be here. You spent money out of your own pocket. I just wanted to say that we really, really appreciate it. So thank you very, very much. And thank you also for wearing the orange t-shirts. That's our company color. You know, you know when I see a Mii fan wearing an orange t-shirt, it's kind of like I get this warm, fuzzy feeling. It's kind of like you're saying, I love you. And we love you too, so it works. And, you know, thank you also for uh, all fans in India and around the world who are tuned to me.com right now following this live webcast. And in fact, now would be a great time to text your friends and tell them that they can get on me.com if they want to follow this product launch. And why don't we get started? So, Xiaomi was founded on April, 10, or April 6, 2010. So we're still a very young little company. And two weeks ago, in fact, was our fifth birthday, which we celebrated all around the world and here in India with our MeFabs. And boy, in just five years, look how far we've come. Time Magazine named our CEO, Lei Jun, China's phone king. And the phone king is actually right here. Welcome, Lei Zhong. I know you've had a really, really busy week so far in India, and it's awesome to have you here. Uh, welcome. It's been amazing growth in just five years. 18 million smartphones sold in 2013, and 61 million in 2014. We've been number one in China since Q2 of last year. And China is not only the largest smartphone market in the world, but it's also the most competitive. And we have already become the number five largest smartphone vendor in the world. Thank you. And we have big plans for India. In July of 2014, just a few months ago, uh, we officially launched Me India. And from day one, uh, what I always said when I visited India was that we're here to build an Indian company. Yeah. You know, for the first couple of months, we had this tiny little office with a single table. You know, we were working in true startup fashion. And this is the Me India family today. Not only the smartest, but also the best looking team in, in all of India. And I'm sure you'll agree with me. Applaud, because they're all here. Yes, they are very good looking. <laughs> and even though they're a very, very small team, they're shown that they're capable of doing extraordinary, extraordinary things. Leading this fantastic team is the one and only my colleague and friend, Mr. Manu Jain, who's right here. You know, behind this baby face and contagious smile is an execution machine that makes Iron Man look like a kindergarten boy. So it did not come as a surprise when Fortune India named Manu one of the 40 most influential business leaders here in India. Fortune India's 40 under 40. Congratulations once again, Manu. So we're here today to announce our newest flagship product. It's a flagship product that I've been personally involved in developing for the past 18 months. We've put in a huge amount of effort into building this product. We've made a few breakthroughs in the process, and we've paid attention to every single detail. Much of the inspiration for this product 
came directly from India. And many of you, I'm sure, remember this question that I'm always asking when we get together in our MIFAN gatherings here. What makes a great phone? And, you know, there's many answers that we get all the time. Uh, I want a super fast phone. I want a phone for gaming. Uh, I want a phone that fits in my hand. I want a phone that doesn't heat up. <laughs> and so on. But invariably, the first thing that I hear is, look, I want a great experience. Well, we've got some great news for you because I is coming. <laughs> Xiaomi's next global flagship product is coming to India first. Are you, are you guys ready? <laughs> All right, here is me for I. It's a flagship me device made for India. Me for India. I think you get it, right? And of course, when we go to Indonesia, I'm going to say it's me for Indonesia. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right. In the next uh, 45 minutes or so, I'm going to take you through a mini journey. And by the end of this mini journey, I hope that you'll agree with me that we've built something really, really special. So let's start with design. Our goal when creating me for i was to boil down the design of a mobile phone to its simplest possible form. And the result is truly, truly stunning. Check this out. <laughs> Mi4i has a unibody design that's just beautiful and flawless. It's a single polycarbonate body that wraps up the entire device. It has incredibly well-defined edges and corners that give it this unashamed, gorgeous, Square, but gorgeous look. Stainless steel buttons, and it's nice and thin. Really, really elegant. And here's the white version, which is just as gorgeous. Isn't that it? You know, you can see all this, the side of the device is just as a smooth edge all the way. It's super clean, beautiful. And the contrast between the white unibody and the black display just works beautifully. The small details really drive home the simplicity of this design. You know, for example, this perfectly machined speaker grill on the back of the device. And it looks awesome with the vibrant MIUI wallpaper. Here you get another glimpse uh, of MIUI. And you can see also how discreet the camera is, you know, flat and flush to the device, very harmonious and really in line with the simplicity of this design. Mi 4i comes in many beautiful colors. Here's yellow, and here's the blue sky version. Here's pink for the ladies. <laughs> and. Here's the whole family of colors. And another angle. Feel free to take pictures, by the way, as many as you want. These are very, just beautiful. <laughs> You'll get a selfie anytime you want. <laughs> and here are all the colors, including the gray-black version. Uh, this looks just amazing, doesn't it? So this is probably my favorite photo, because you can see the beautifully well-defined edges on the back of the devices, all the colors together. You can see how the unibody has a rim that pops from the front of the device. The MIUI wallpaper, I mean, it's just really gorgeous. <laughs> We've made a video for you uh, that we wanted to check out. Um, take a look.
All right. That was pretty cool. Okay. So how big is me for I? I hear five and a half. I hear five. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think phones in India have become decidedly bigger over the last year. But what's interesting when you ask user is that the overwhelming majority says, I don't want a big phone. <laughs> right? So we think the right question to ask actually is, how small is me for I? Me for I is an ultra compact flagship device. Yes. You can see here how it compares with the larger flagship premium devices in the market. And here's how it compares with iPhone 6. Uh, we designed, <laughs> this is a fun crowd, I love it. We designed Me for I with a five inch display. It's actually the same height uh, as iPhone 6 with a 10% larger screen. It also has a 7% higher screen-to-body ratio, which is the proportion of the front face that's actually occupied uh, by the screen. It basically means the Mi 4i screen takes a bigger part of the front of the display compared to iPhone 6. Mi 4i is also very, very thin. It's super slim. It's 7.8 millimeters thin. That's just 12% thinner than Mi 4. It's also super light. It's 130 grams, which is 13% lighter than Mi 4, and actually just about the exact same weight as iPhone 6. So it's a very, very compact device. And this is what it looks like when you're actually holding it. We specifically chose a female Indian hand model for these shots because we wanted to give you a really good idea of how it actually looks in reality. So Mi 4i is a flagship device that's designed for your hand. And it's designed for your hand not only because it's the perfect compact size, but also because it feels great to the touch. It has this, self, this really uh, beautiful soft touch matte finish that feels like soft, smooth skin. And we've created a special anti-grease coating that resists stains, smudges, fingerprints, and pretty much anything else. Even in the case of a marker, a marker that's designed to stick to any surface, all you got to do is just wipe it away. There it is. Boom. And to summarize, uh, on design, unibody design, ultra compact body with a 5-inch display, super slim at 7.8 millimeters, and super light at 130 grams. Soft touch matte finish and an anti-grease coating that's ready for the test. It's designed for your hand. I hope you guys like it so far. And here are some bonus shots showing the bright, protective cases that we've designed for Me4i. I personally love the orange one the most, of course. <laughs> Do you guys want to see it? Yeah. You want to see it right now? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Tony. Here it is. Yeah, should we look at on the side? This is a side look. Yeah, <laughs> and then let's look at it in the back as well. I have a white and a blue version right here. You want to see the front again? Sure, of course. Here we go. As many photos as you like. <laughs> I think it's a much better looking phone <laughs> than me, for sure. You guys got some shots up there? 
All right, I see some flashes coming out. Okay. All right. Goes straight into my pocket. It'll come out again, not to worry. Okay. So let's keep going here. Now that I've talked about design, um, uh, I really want to talk about all the cool stuff that's inside Mi4i. So let me start with one of the key highlights of Mi4i, um, which if you've been following our Mi India Sofa page, you already know about. Battery. Did you guys see this? It's pretty cool, right? Uh, we, have, we have the coolest creative team uh, at, at, in, here with Me India, and this is what they designed. Our fans really loved it. This was our social media teaser for the battery. You know, the challenge behind the design of Me4i was that we wanted to ship a large battery inside an ultra-compact phone. How do you do that? Uh, this was a really hard one for us, and it actually took us 18 months to get there. We're shipping a 3,120 million power battery. This is the largest battery that we have ever shipped on any flagship device, including Mi 4 and Mi Note. It's on average 38% higher capacity compared to all of the other premium 5-inch phones, which is a pretty big number. You know, Moore's Law talks about the fact that uh, processors double in speed every 18 months, but that's semiconductor technology. When it comes to battery technology, progress is not nearly as fast. It's actually quite slow. In fact, if anyone make a breakthrough discovery in battery technology, they would win the Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize and they would get pretty rich, no doubt about that. So how did we do it? How did we get around this constraint? Well, we did it by using the absolute latest technology, a 4.4 volt battery, which has the highest charging voltage of any battery technology. In fact, uh, charging voltage helps with both speed as well as total capacity. Most of the other phones out there can only reach a charging voltage of about 4.2 volts. We're also using a 700 watt hour per liter polymer cell platform, which just packs the molecules inside the battery closer together, which means you can store more energy inside the battery. Uh, so this is the latest uh, kind of battery technology. It's also very expensive. Mi4i is only the second device in the world to ship uh, with this battery technology. Yeah. Compared, compared to Mi4, the Mi4i battery is actually 9% smaller and has a 12% higher density for energy. And it's 72% larger and higher capacity, I should say, than iPhone 6. I thought you'd enjoy that. We designed this breakthrough solution working with two leading global partners uh, who are the leaders in battery technology. Uh, that includes uh, son, uh, Sony and Samsung. Uh, and I could talk to you for a while about theoretical lab values, uh, talk time, playback time, video playback time, gaming time, and so on. But since none of us lives in a lab, let me just tell you that it gets me through about one and a half days of usage. And that's a combination uh, of the very large battery, of course, which is the hardware part, but also all the MIUI software optimizations that we've continued to make to really get you the most out of your battery on Mi4i. Mi4i supports quick charge, of course. So even with a large battery that's over 3,000 milliamp hours, it takes you less than an hour to get to 40% and less than three hours to get to 100%. That's pretty cool. And that's battery. Now let's talk about the display. There's a lot of cool stuff here. Uh, this was the first social media teaser that we did. Um, we had so many funny comments on this. I spent hours and hours just reading and replying. Um, I think you guys really enjoyed it. Thank you for participating, by the way. Uh, Me4i, of course, of course, <laughs> ships with a 1920 by 1080, 1080p display. I said, of course, because you wouldn't and you shouldn't expect anything less, frankly speaking. A 1080p display packs more than twice the number of pixels compared to a 720p display, as you can see here. And it really, really shows. Text is so much crisper, and images are so much sharper on a 1080p display. And you guys know this. So we see this very, very simply. A flagship device must ship with no less than a 1080p display, full stop. 
Do you agree? I thought so. Of course, another way to talk about this is to look at PPI, uh, which stands for pixels per inch. Um, this is the formula that we use to calculate PPI using resolution and screen size. Mi4i has a PPI of 441 pixels per inch. And by the way, contrary to what some people say about 300 PPI being the maximum resolution that the human eye can see, the human eye can definitely see well beyond 300 PPI. In fact, Mi4i has a higher PPI than both iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. <laughs> Boy, having so much fun up here. <laughs> so we ship display models from the world's two leading su display suppliers, that's Sharp and JDI, uh, IPS 178 degrees a wide viewing angle. And we're shipping NTSC 95% ultra high color gamut. What does that mean? Color gamut is basically the, a measure of how much of the human visible color spectrum the display is capable of reproducing. Uh, this is uh, the iPhone 6 NTSC 72% uh, triangle. Basically, the colors that can be displayed are those inside of the triangle. And this is the Mi 4i NTSC 95%. And you can see that it's a considerably larger triangle, which means that it can actually display a wider range of colors. That means Mi 4i can display redder reds and greener greens. And of course, bluer blues as well. Um, this is what it, it also means that uh, uh, Mi4i is capable of displaying images with deeply saturated colors much more accurately even than iPhone 6. My, <laughs> but here's the irony. This is not an NTSC 95% projector. So you actually can't see as much of the detail here as what's actually on the slide. Uh, anyways, fully laminated OGS display. Uh, when we started designing Mi4i, we went to Corning, who you guys uh, know very well, and we said, we'd like you to customize a glass solution for us. We want the thinnest possible display with the strength of Gorilla Glass. So the entire display of Mi4i is an assembly that's fully, fully laminated. It means that the glass and the touch panel are actually a single component. There's no air gap between the touch panel and the LCD. It means that the pixels are actually much closer to the surface of the glass, uh, which is a much, much better experience. So this customized um, solution from Corning for us has the same base composition as Gorilla Glass 3, which makes it super tough and super scratch resistant. We made a video, a pretty cool video for you showing how we test this. Take a look. This is pretty cool. I also thought it was pretty cool how um, this was probably designed. As soon as he lifts the phone, the number changes. Did you see that? That's pretty cool. I don't think that was by chance, by the way. We have a really, really detail-oriented film team. Uh, one beautiful advantage of this fully laminated OGS display is that it's really black uh, when the LCD is off. Look at that. W why don't we see that again? Look at that. You know, this is, of course, completely intentional and it's harmonious with the simplicity of the design that we've been talking about, right? It looks great. You know, just a couple of weekends ago, I was uh, on a road trip with some friends, um, and I remember clearly one day, one of my friends was trying to take a photo. It was, you know, bright daylight. It was really harsh sunlight. And he was trying to take a group photo, and he was squinting and trying to see the display and complaining that he couldn't actually see um, the photo that he was trying to take because it was so bright. I remember that very clearly. Now, he was probably looking at something similar to this, uh, a very washed-out image that under normal ambient light would probably look more like this, right, which is a much, much more detailed image. Now, what's happening here is that um, under direct sunlight, uh, the shadow areas become much darker. You lose a lot of the fine details. And this happens because your eye pupils actually shrink. They're taking in less light. You lose the ability to see a lot of this detail. 
And in the lighter areas in the photo, you also lose a lot of the detail because the display is trying to compensate for the brightness of the environment. And it's cranking up brightness, which washes away all this detail. You lose the beautiful clouds. You can't even see the mountain in the back, right? So we've developed a really awesome new technology called Sunlight Display. You know, Sunlight Display is a hardware-based technology. It's on the DSP, and it solves this problem using a technique called local tone mapping, which some of the expert photographers here would have heard of. Um, really, we want your display to show beautiful, detailed images, no matter what the lighting conditions are, and this is what Sunlight Display does. It's actually really quite clever, and I want to show how this works. So here's that image again. Uh, displayed the way that the human eye would see it in a very, very bright environment. So this is what my friend was looking at. Now, I'm going to show you how sunlight display acts, and I'm going to break it down for you step by step so you can see how this magic really happens. Um, so this all happens in real time. So first, uh, it identifies this bright area near the top of the image, and it reduces the brightness of just those pixels. So you see? Uh, so it brings back some of the detail that got washed out. For the mid-tones, which are all around sort of the other right side of the image, uh, they're neither too dark nor too light, so their brightness is actually preserved. It doesn't change. For the shadow areas, which are these darker areas on the side where the detailed texture had disappeared, the pixel brightness increased, and the result is much better looking because you bring back a lot of that detail, right? It looks pretty amazing. So here's the comparison. Here's the before and after, right? And you can see very, very clearly. On the left, you have these darker, shadowy areas with a lot of detail lost. You can even see the mountain in the back. And on the right-hand side, you have what me 4 i Sunlight Display does. Uh, and it makes a pretty huge difference. Uh, this is actually a really, really cool video that I want to show you. Uh, and it really explains this very, very well. So let's take a look. Cool, right? Yeah. It's actually pretty cool that even, even the keyboard sort of changes when you're outside and actually makes it a lot easier for you to see it and type into your phone. Um, uh, so I encourage you to try this. Uh, so this is actually a technology that increases the quality of the image in under all lighting conditions. It's just much more obvious when we do a, a comparison like this, but it generally speaking makes things look much uh, more visible. Uh, things just pop out of the display much more easily. And of course, you can take it under harsh sunlight and it'll make it easier for you to see everything. And it's also 30% more battery efficient than the average 1080p display, which of course takes us back to that battery story that we were talking about earlier. So that was Sunlight Display. Uh, I'm glad that you liked it. I think it's really awesome. And you get to try it out uh, later today when you play with me 4 i So to sum up, outside in the Experience Center, I meant. <laughs> and to sum up the incredible me 4 i display, uh, 5 inches, 1080p at 441 ppi, IPS with 178 degree viewing angle, NTSC 95% with ultra high color gamut, fully laminated OGS custom glass solution, and sunlight display. It's a catchy name, isn't it? Sunlight display. I like it. Okay, so that sums up display. And next I want to talk about camera. Yep, that's what I thought. <laughs> So Xiaomi has a really big tradition in photography. I think you guys know this. We care a lot about making sure that all the photos that you take with our phones come out great. And every single one of our phones from the very, very first one has shipped with a great camera. And our fans show their love by sharing their photos with us. Uh, and they're really, really awesome. Like this one that's taken with a Mi 1. A Mi 1 was launched in 2011, so it's been a few years. Uh, this is a photo taken with Me Too, uh, which shipped in 2012. Um, and here's a photo taken with Me 3. This is actually pretty awesome. Um, kind of scary, too. This is a beautiful scenery taken with Me 4, 
with many, which many of you know quite well. Uh, this is a photo taken with Redmi 2. It's this beautiful, uh, colorful uh, flower pattern. It's just stunning. Uh, this is a twilight scene from um, Redmi Note as well. And here's a beautiful HDR photo taken with Mi Note. Um, so you get it. And of course, you know a lot of this already because you carry Mi phones. Our approach to mobile photography is to take top of line hardware and then combine it with really smart software. We are a software company, so we are in a natural position to take advantage of this and really, really work hard on coupling these two things. So I'm going to talk about both hardware and software. To start with, um, let's focus on software. The Mi 4i camera is itself an important part of our design, like I told you earlier. Um, it's this just beautiful, flat to the surface, um, flush camera that's very, very discreet. In fact, we use the same patented technology for Mi Note to build a camera into a really, really thin device. Um, and it really makes a design come together. It's lovely. Uh, we're shipping um, what's inside, in fact, are the highest quality optical and electronics components that you can find. We're shipping the highest sensor, 13 megapixels from Sony and Samsung, a five element lens with an f2.0 aperture, which lets in a lot of light. And these are the same components, by the way, that we use on Mi Note. Uh, it is what a flagship camera should be, in our opinion. We designed Mi 4i with a two tone flash. Uh, which uses two LEDs. Uh, one of them is a cold white LED, the other one is a yellow LED. Uh, and what the software does is it takes a measurement of the temperature of the scene and then decides on the combination of white and yellow that will most closely match that scene. So when you take the photo with a flash, it actually looks very natural. Like this scene, for example, which is more on the yellow side. Uh, otherwise, you get this kind of fight between a cold white yellow on the foreground subject and maybe a more, sorry, cold white uh, flash on the foreground subject and maybe a yellow background. It kind of doesn't match. It doesn't look very pretty. And sometimes you can't even see what you're trying to photograph because it's very, very dark. Um, and it's even hard to focus in some of these cases. So what we've done is we've built a feature called Torch. Uh, for those situations, it's built right into the camera software. And you can actually turn on Torch straight from the camera manual, right next to the flash. Uh, so it makes it easy for you to turn it on, focus, you know, frame your shot, and then, of course, um, it takes the photo. The front camera of Mi 4i is also very, very strong. It's a 5 megapixel uh, uh, camera with a 5 element lens as well, f1.8 aperture and 80 degree uh, wide angle. And I want to talk to you about a couple of the smart camera software features that we've continued to build and optimize, including a couple of new things. Uh, the first one that I want to talk about is Beautify, um, uh, which is a feature that we've actually had for some time, uh, but we've made it a lot better in the UI 6. And I want to show you a few examples and also explain how it works. Beautify is actually quite clever. It uses a face analysis algorithm to estimate, first of all, your age and your gender. Then it uses 12 different profiles, six female and six male profiles. And clearly, the designer was trying to win some brownie points here by <laughs> putting me in the 18 to 30 uh, uh, category somehow. Uh, and then for each of these profiles, uh, there's a secret recipe of facial adjustments. Uh, and these adjustments will include things like uh, skin smoothing, uh, wrinkle removal, uh, whitening of the lips, you know, even narrowing of the face. And the key here is having different recipes for each of these different profiles. For younger people, especially younger girl, we'll use heavy filtering because that's what they like. Uh, for Older profiles, maybe 60 years old uh, plus, will use a lot of the wrinkle removal, but will leave all of the other filters off. The result is that everyone just looks better in many ways. So here's an example. This is my friend Jay. Uh, Jay, of course, is of course very, very pretty naturally, but Beautify gives her this special glow, and it's really awesome. It's super, super natural. Uh, so she'll look absolutely stunning, doesn't she? Uh, here's another example. Uh, I think Beautify makes her look radiant and even more youthful. Uh, it looks incredibly natural as well. These are all actual real shots. Um, you can actually notice that there's small differences between the left and the right because we were asking the subject to stay you know, in place, but of course we can't. Um, but they are actual shots from Beautify. 
This one was included in the presentation against my will. Let's just say that. But it does show how Beautify tends to make wrinkles really disappear. And I'll tell you, our fan feedback on Beautify has been pretty amazing. People really, really love it. So we've actually turned it on by default for the selfie camera. So whenever you go to the front camera, it's on by default. Uh, you can turn it off. Uh, I have a funny story with my sister. I gave her uh, a Mi 4, actually, for Christmas, which has Beautify in it. And, you know, my sister's a very busy doctor. She's, uh, she's awesome what she does. And all of a sudden, she starts to, fan to send selfie photos into the family chat, you know, complimenting how cool this phone is because it has such a great camera. Um, to this end, I haven't yet told her until now, I guess, that there was some smart software involved, uh, but I'm sure she'll understand. Hi, Chris. All right. So um, another feature is uh, selfie timer. Uh, selfie timer goes hand in hand uh, with Beautify. It basically makes it much easier for you to take a selfie uh, because you can push the shutter button and then take your time to frame the shot uh, without having to worry about you know, hitting the button and so on and so forth. Um, and this is how it works, basically. So you see the countdown right next to the sensor, and then it fires the shot. In fact, sh should we take a group selfie? Can we, can we pull that off? All right, all right, let's pull, let's pull it off. I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to use my blue uh, Mi 4i. Uh, okay, so maybe we'll start with this side. Can we get house lights on, please? Okay. All right, you guys are going to get ready for this. Okay. So, oh, look, it's telling me I'm 20, 29 years old. All right, pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to hit the shutter, and then we're going to see the countdown. I set it to five seconds. So you guys have to pose, huh? Two, one. All right. Did you get that? Should we, should we do one, do one over there? Okay, 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 okay. Fine, fine, fine. Let's do one over there. Okay. You guys are ready for this? Okay. You ready? Okay. Here we go. Four, three, two, one. All right. It's, it's actually kind of cool how this shows off. Oh, you want more? <laughs> okay, we'll do one more, one more, one more, one more. Maybe I'll do a front one. Center. Okay, okay, okay. Center, center. I'm going to reposition myself over here. You guys ready? You got to stand up. You got to stand up. All right. Okay. Here you go. Three, two, one. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. That was fun. This is officially the biggest group selfie I've ever taken. <laughs> All right. I will share these later, I promise. Okay. So next feature. As many of you know, I'm a pretty big fan of HDR. And HDR is actually a pretty well understood concept. I'm going to explain it uh, quickly. You know, it's actually very difficult to photograph a scene like this one because there's a lot of brightness uh, in the horizon, but everything else is a little bit darker. Um, what HDR does is it combines multiple shots at different exposure levels to give you a much more complete photo, and it's much more balanced, which, of course, looks much more similar to what our eyes can see because our eyes have better sort of exposure ranges than any camera. Uh, so HDR just makes it look more like reality. And we've always offered an extremely high-quality HDR feature. In fact, I'm on the record saying many times that I think we have the best HDR of any camera, bar none, full stop. It does an incredibly good job of aligning three exposures, even doing ghost removal if there's a moving subject, which makes it possible for you to take photos of people running, of anything you want, uh, and it comes out really, really good. We're adding some new features to our HDR functionality that really take it to an entirely new level. We're adding automatic gamma and contrast tuning, color correction, and low light denoising. All of these are automatic image processing algorithms that really basically make your photos look a lot more beautiful. This is really computational photography techniques that we're bringing uh, into MIUI 6 and Mi 4i. 
Our goal, again, is to approach what your eyes can see. I take all of my photos with Me4i using HDR, and they come out amazingly well. So here are some beautiful shots uh, taken by some of our fans who were part of the beta testing team uh, using uh, the new HDR feature. This is a challenging shot because, as I said earlier, there's water, right? So it's fast-moving water, and you still want to take a shot uh, that has a lot of ghosting, so you've got to remove all of that. Uh, it looks really, really good. Uh, this is a beautiful shot with a lot of color that really comes out, and you can see a lot of texture as well. HDR really brings texture out. This is an amazing sunset uh, photo with uh, beautiful yellow color, uh, which uh, is part of what HDR does now as well to really bring that color out. Uh, I love this shot. This is a really tough guy shot. Uh, but the important thing here is to see how the texture comes out, and this is because of contrast tuning that HDR does. It's what enables you to take a photo that looks like something that came from a professional camera. This is a lot of image processing that takes place transparently right after you took the photo. This next photo is also beautiful. Uh, this not only takes advantage of the contrast tuning that I've talked about that HDR does, but it also beautifully uses the Mi4i aperture. Uh, it gives you this short depth of field, and you can see that only part of the, the photo is actually in focus. So it's really, really great. And this is my favorite photo. It's a beautiful portrait with a lot of color and a lot of texture. Um, that's HDR for you guys. Really, really cool. Thank you very much. And we, we're making a real point of actually uh, leveraging the photography community here in India, uh, particularly the MeFan photography community. We're going to be running lots of cool contests, and we're looking forward to seeing what you'll do with Me4i. So to wrap up the camera section here, um, Me4i camera, 13 megapixels uh, on the front, on the rear camera, f2.0. Uh, 5 megapixel front camera, f1.8, uh, with an 80 degree wide angle, and great smart software features with Beautify and the amazing HDR. So that's it for camera. You guys okay to continue? All right, all right, all right. Stick with me here. So let's talk about performance. As many of you already guessed, Me4i <laughs> ships with a Snapdragon 615 processor. Now, what you did not guess is that we're shipping. Uh, Me4i with a second generation Snapdragon 615 processor, which is actually considerably faster than the first generation. It's a 64-bit architecture, uh, which gives you higher memory throughput and so on. And we're really making that happen. I think you know what that means. Uh, and uh, the coolest thing about this architecture, it's an octo-core architecture, uh, is that um, it uses this two-core system that's very interesting. It has four high-performance cores running at 1.7 gigahertz, and those cores are used for foreground running applications that are more CPU intensive. And four power-saving cores that are used for background running tasks, so the, the set of eight cores works really beautifully between high-performance and battery-saving modes, which is really, really great. Uh, the first generation of Snapdragon 615 ran at 1.5 and 1.0, the second generation, which is the one that we're using, runs at 1.7 and 1.1. And what a lot of people don't actually know is that Snapdragon 615 is actually designed and engineered completely in India. And in fact, Qualcomm India is represented by, right here by Dinesh Prasad, who's right here on a wave. There he is. Thank you, Dinesh. Thank you for being here. You know, we actually worked very, very closely with Qualcomm India to really, really tune and optimize the Snapdragon 615 second-gen processor uh, with uh, Mi4i. Uh, we did a lot of things. We wrote a CPU scheduler uh, that really tries to tune when the cores come online and so on and so forth. Uh, and we really want to thank Qualcomm uh, for working with us on this. Uh, we're very, very grateful. Thank you again. And here are the benchmarks. Uh, Mi4i shows flying colors in the key benchmarks, including going over 40,000 on Antutu, 2, which I know you guys really, really like, so uh, definitely test it out as well. Uh, but we really, really tuned uh, uh, the processor working closely with Qualcomm, so we're really happy with the performance. We're shipping Mi4i with two gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and 16 gigabytes of onboard flash. All right. 
And that's a quick view of performance, uh, a lot more that we can talk about um, later as well. Uh, I want to quickly cover software, talk about system. Uh, Mi4i, of course, ships with MIUI 6, which has already surpassed the mark of over 100 million active users around the world, which is a really, really awesome achievement. <laughs> MIUI is an operating system that's under development and iteration at all times. It's been like that for the last five years. We have lots of terrific, terrific features around customization, utilities, security, and a beautiful, beautiful UI. And I'm sure you're going to like this. Me 4i is our first device to ship with Me UI 6 on Android L. So we're very, very excited about the fact that Me 4i is the first Android L device that we're shipping on Me UI 6. And I'm also thrilled to announce a completely new feature that we've built for India on top of Me UI. Do you guys know what IVR stands for? It's, exactly, it's interactive voice response. But if that didn't sound familiar for some of you, I think you might relate to this. Namaskar, Bharatiya Rail ki Pochta Seva mein aapka swagat hai. Welcome to Indian Railways Inquiry System. Hindi mein jankari ke liye ek dabaan. For English, press 2. Press 3 to know the arrival departure of next day's train. Please enter the train number. So, it took 77 seconds to navigate through that tree and actually get to the point where you could get your answer. And most of that time was actually spent listening to prompts that informed you what you could do next. Here's another example of an even more complicated IVR tree. This is for a popular national bank here in India. Uh, it's pretty maddening that you have to go so deep uh, to get your answer, but that's how IVR works. Could this be simpler? Is there, could there be a simpler, faster way to navigate through all these menus in these IVR systems which are still so common? Yes, it's a feature called Visual IVR, which we're adding to MIUI, and we're really excited. Yes, we're really, really excited to introduce that to in India. So basically, let me show you how this works. All you have to do is basically dial the number as you normally would, uh, using your keypad or you can uh, dial from your address book. And then as soon as the call connects, basically you're going to see this screen with that button, if the IVR system is compatible, uh, meaning if we know that IVR system, it says voice menu. Then when you tap that voice menu, you're basically inside of visual IVR. So here you'll choose English. Uh, then uh, arrivals and departures, so we can quickly navigate through those options. I know the train number, so I can choose that. Uh, I want uh, trains for tomorrow. And then, and it's, like, it's like boom, 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 boom. You get to the point where you want. At this point, uh, MIUI will then forward those digits by just basically playing them into the phone line. Uh, and it will land you exactly where you want it. And it'll even put the pauses that sometimes are needed uh, to get you to the right place. And it got you to the exact same place that it took you 70 second, seconds to get in just a matter of seconds, which is pretty cool, right? <laughs> so this feature uh, is launching into the MIUI beta build first, because uh, we really want to test it. And then later, it'll be available for everyone. Now, what's cool is what you guys are going to do to help us. Uh, we are planning to crowdsource a lot of these IVR trees. Uh, so the MIUI fan community is going to help us. They already are helping us uh, to support and add as many IVR systems as we can uh, all around India. So we're really excited to make your life easier. Okay. And here's one final piece of great news. Uh, we now support six Indian languages as part of MIUI 6. We've already been supporting Hindi. Uh, we now also support uh, Bengali, Tamil, uh, Telugu, uh, Kannada, and Malayalam. Really excited about that. And we also made a beautiful video for you that shows how gorgeous MIUI 6 is. Let's take a look.
So that's, that's just a quick glance of MIUI 6, which many of you, of course, already know. It's a lot of fun, uh, and it looks great. It's a very happy UI. We're very proud uh, to have built it, and we are looking forward to doing more on MIUI uh, with your help as well. Uh, I want to go back to Mi4i and talk about wireless. A couple things I want to highlight here. First of all, as is standard with all of our flagship devices, dual micro SIM support, dual standby. We support five different wireless modes uh, and 16 bands, which of course includes FDD LTE uh, 1800 and TDD LTE 2300, which are the 4G bands here in India. And of course, very, very useful is also the fact that 2G, 3G, and 4G are supported on both SIM slots. So you actually ever, never have to actually worry about you know, switching SIM cards around. And also, as with all of our flagship devices, we support 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Uh, and not only that, but we're also adding support to MU MIMO, which is a new wireless standard that gives you three times faster downlink speed uh, on uh, Wi-Fi networks. You know, and this is the kind of thing that we insist uh, on adding to our products because we want to make sure that they're true flagship products. But you're actually going to have a hard time finding 802.11 AC in a lot of devices, but we go all the way. Um, we want to make sure that every single one of our devices is a true flagship. In addition to 802.11 uh, AC, MI4i also supports Bluetooth 4.1, uh, GPS GLONASS, uh, Wi-Fi Direct, and then we just sneaked in USB on the go here, even though it has nothing to do with wireless. It seemed like a good place to put it. <laughs> so that's it. So uh, a quick summary of MI4i so far. Uh, everything you've seen here today, the unibody design, the 3,120 milliamp hour battery, 5-inch 1080p display, 13 megapixel camera, second generation Snapdragon 615, and MIUI 6 on Android L. These are some of the great features of it. So great, great features, but is that all it takes to build a great phone? Hold on. <laughs> so building a great phone requires an extraordinary amount of work. Uh, it takes about 18 months for us to build, design, and build a new product end-to-end. -end. And that's because we care about every single detail. We care about the quality of every component and absolutely everything. We have three core principles when it comes to engineering. The first one is we only work with the world's top, top suppliers. For me, for i uh, we are getting our processor from Qualcomm, displays from Sharp and JDI, uh, the memory and battery from Samsung, uh, the camera sensor and battery also coming from Sony, and the display glass from Corning. And that's just to name a few. Here are many of our other suppliers. Um, these are hand pick companies that are the absolute best of what they do in their respective fields. Uh, they're providing the highest quality components in each uh, of these specialty areas. And we want to make sure that we are using only the best, all the way down to the micro screws that you have on the motherboard. The second principle uh, is what I call precision engineering. We actually care so much about the interior design of the phone as much as we care about the exterior design. And we really go all the way to make sure that our phones are beautiful on the inside as well. Mi 4i is actually a perfect example of this. You know, we wanted to make an ultra compact 5-inch device with an unusually large battle, battery. To get there, we had to build the smallest motherboard that we've ever built. It's also the densest because it has the most components. And this stuff is really, really hard. Um, and it's a beautiful motherboard, in fact. Um, we also partner very closely with uh, top suppliers like Corning and Sharp to build a very, very thin custom display because that allows the whole phone to become much thinner. And our custom battery solution, which I've also talked to you about, which is leading technology from a number of suppliers. You know, it really took us 18 months to really nail all of this. And if you have the chance, by the way, to stop by our office or one of our service centers, ask a technician to open Mi4i for you and take a look inside. I promise that you're going to love it. It's beautifully done, uh, and it's actually really hard to get there, 
but we're so proud of it. Thank you. The third principle is automation, which is the best way to ensure the ultimate precision and consistent quality. We work very closely with Qualcomm, sorry, we work very closely with Qualcomm as well, but we work very closely with Foxconn uh, to design the manufacturing process all the way down to the robotics. And I wanted to show you a really, really cool video shot at the actual Me4i production line that shows not only some of the cool robotics that goes into manufacturing, but also some of the rigorous tests that we put our devices through. This is a really cool video. Check it out. Pretty cool, right? You know, uh, this video is so cool and, in my opinion, so important that I actually wanted to rewind and take you through some of the parts of this video one by one and actually talk to you about some of the details of testing, which is such an important thing to do to make sure that we're building the highest quality products. So let's do this. Let's walk through some of these and I'll explain them step by step. Um, so this is uh, USB and earphone port testing. Uh, it's to ensure that they are well bit. And what's important here is that the machine that does the test actually does it at a bunch of different angles to simulate how a human hand would actually introduce and remove the plug into the connector. Uh, because, of course, humans aren't doing the same thing all the time, right? Uh, so many companies actually don't have this test, or many of them actually just do a straight, you know, in and out uh, uh, connector test. It actually takes a much more expensive machine to do it the way it does, um, which is to vary the angles and so on. Uh, next one is uh, the deformation test. Um, so this is the deformation test. It basically tests how the phone behaves when it's in your back pocket and then you sit down on top of it. So it's basically just easier to call it the butt test. <laughs> so this is obviously an important uh, test to make sure that the device can return to its original shape after it's bent. <laughs> and I think it's very clear that some companies may not have run these tests all the way. The, the next one is the tumble test. Uh, let's take a look at the tumble test. So this is, a, this is a sample tumble test, but the real test puts 20 devices all at the same time into the machine and then lets them spin for a while. This is actually a very aggressive test, uh, and it kind of breaks my heart to watch it. <laughs> but then at the end, when I see that the phones are still working, of course, I feel much better. Uh, but this is a really aggressive test when you have 20 phones in there. Uh, the next one is the angle drop test. So in this test, we drop the device from one and a half meters height at an angle. And we make sure that the hard surface uh, on the bottom, by the way, is, is very hard. And it hits exactly on the corner, which is the weakest structural point of the device. Uh, it's also a very, very important test. Uh, this next one is uh, the raindrop test. And we let it run for about 10 minutes. Uh, it's basically a really good test to make sure that our devices are resistant to sweat, you know, and light, rain, and so on. Just to be clear, this is not a waterproof device. This is not a full uh, weather test. 
um, but it allows you to at least make sure that it'll resist, uh, you know, sweat and light exposure to weather. Uh, and this next one is a sunlight test. Uh, basically, we put the phones into a super tanning machine to see how they react to really, really harsh sunlight, UV light, for an extended period of time. And by the way, we don't run these tests on every single phone. Um, uh, we actually run them on samples from each manufacturing batch. It's part of the quality control test to make sure that every single phone that comes out of the manufacturing line uh, is of top, top quality. So I hope that that was a fun insight. We're all geeks here, so I know you guys like this stuff. I hope that was a fun insight into our engineering thinking, into our engineering process. And I also hope that you understand how much we care about engineering, about precision manufacturing, about quality of components and quality of finished product. So let's sum up me for i once again. Second generation Snapdragon 615 processor, 5-inch display, 1080p, 441 PPI with sunlight display, which you guys loved, 3,120 milliamp hour battery, takes you for about one and a half days. 13 megapixel two-tone camera, five megapixel front camera, and a 4G dual SIM with MIUI 6 running on Android L. You guys like it? Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so let's do a quick comparison first. So what we did was we selected a number of devices that had comparable specs uh, to uh, Mi 4i and that came from manufacturers with the same high quality standards. These are all 1080p devices, for example. So if I look at you know, Moto X second gen, it's on a Snapdragon 801 processor, uh, but with a very small battery, 2300, uh, at 30,000 rupees. Uh, the next one on our list here is Galaxy A7 which is on a first-generation Snapdragon 615 with a smaller 2600 battery on a much larger phone um, at 29,000 rupees. Uh, then HTC Desire 826 uh, on Snapdragon 615, same 2600 milliamp hour battery, also on a larger phone, right? So it's kind of small. Um, Mi 4i, in turn, is our flagship device. It's designed in India. It has considerably larger battery. Uh, it's also very compact. It's great to hold. So what would be a fair price for me for i Wow, wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So just to recap, you know, we loaded up me for i with some of the most high-end and most expensive components available to us. You know, it's like buying a car with all of the upgrades and with all of the optional accessories. You know, the display is probably one of the best examples of this. Uh, it's sourced from the two best suppliers in the world, and it's totally decked out. 1080p, NTSC 95%, fully laminated, OGS, and then sunlight display on top of that. And these things add up really, really quickly. Just to give you an idea, just, just going from 720p to 1080p doubles uh, the cost of the display. When you add up all these features, you're looking at multiple times the cost of a much lower end average display. And I could say the same thing about every other component. 802.11ac, the large 4.4 volt battery with 700 um, uh, polymer cell, which is we're only the second one to ship this, Sony camera sensor, and the list goes on and on. Flagship devices are expensive to make. They're not cheap phones. And we've designed a flagship device for India. So let me ask you the question again. Kitna doge. Twelve, nine, nine, nine. All right.
Do I hear me three fans? All right. So, Me For I goes on sale April 30th. Registration starts tonight at 8 p.m. And it will later be available across all of our channels, including, of course, me.com. And also starting in May, me for i will also be available in all of our other global markets in May, including Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia, who are all tuned in to the webcast right now. So looking forward to that too. And just so you can take one more picture, uh, here's me for i once again, ultra compact unibody, second gen Snapdragon, five inch 1080p display, 441 PPI sunlight display, 3,100 milliamp power. I'm going to take it out again, and I'll keep going. Uh, 13 megapixel, two-tone flash, 5 megapixel front camera, 4G dual SIM, MIUI 6 on Android L. You like it? And here is the slogan that we created for Me4i. For uh, innovation made compact. You know, we thought these were actually the words that best capture the essence of what the new flagship product is all about. So please, please help us spread the word. All right. Okay. Is this the end? What if I said that B is coming? What? Uh, yep. There it is. You got it. Me band is finally coming to India. So, let me tell you a little bit about it. I think you already know, but I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, Mi Band is beautifully made. Uh, it's precisely machined uh, aluminum alloy core, hypoallergenic silicone band. It's with you all day. It tracks your exercise in the morning. It syncs with your Mi Band app via Bluetooth LE uh, to analyze your exercise. The app is available for Android as well as iOS. It automatic monitors your sleep, and it uses, again, the Mi Band app to analyze your sleep quality every day. In the morning, it wakes you up gently 30 minutes before the alarm goes off. And it wakes you up gradually and naturally so that you feel like you're ready to go when the alarm finally goes off. Now, sticking to your fitness goals uh, is actually pretty tough, and we know this. So fitness trackers really have to be very, very easy and very convenient to use. That's why Mi Band has a 30-day battery. But actually, in practice, you'll get 50 or even 60 days out of this device. That's five to ten times longer than any other fitness tracker in the market in the entire world. It's water resistant to IP67 standard, so no need to take it off in the shower. You can go swimming with it, no problem. And it's beautiful. In addition to the black version, which is the one I'm wearing, uh, we have blue, green, pink, and here are all of them together. They look absolutely gorgeous. There's basically a color for everyone. And we've also designed these beautiful leather straps that are available in different styles, including brown, which is certainly my favorite. It looks absolutely great. Now, Mi Band is also more than just a fitness tracker. It's actually your ID as well. With Mi Band, you can unlock your phone or your tablet. And we're cool. So, of course, it not only supports Mi phones, but also any Android 5.0 device. 
And I'm really excited to announce that we now ship about one million Mi Bands per month around the world. And that makes Mi Band the most popular, number one fitness tracker in the world. We're really excited about that. What's the price? I promise, no drama this time. No drama. Here you go. Yes. Mi Band will be available exclusively on Mi.com. And here's the summary. You want to see the slide again? We can go back one slide. Mi.com, uh, which of course is now available here in India, and you can check it out. Uh, Mi Band, just to summarize, and I have a couple more things to tell you. Track your fitness and sleep data. Unlock your phone or tablet. Smart alarm clock. 30-day battery. Plus, plus, water-resistant IP67 standards. Now, we have two surprises for you. So first of all, first, we're introducing a special Mi Band preview program, 1,000 units available at one rupee. Registration starts on April 28th. And to introduce the second surprise for you, I'd like to invite on stage Xiaomi founder and CEO, uh, Lei Jun. Hello? Hello? How are you? Hi. Indian Mi fans, I'm very happy to be in China, uh, to be in India. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like me for I? Yeah. Do you like me band? Yeah. Okay. We have a gift. For everyone. We will. Okay, okay. We will give uh, everyone a free B band. Are you okay? Are you okay? Thank you. Thank you. We will give everyone a free B band and one kind of free strap. Kind of strap. Do you like? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laison. OK. So, wow, what a day. Today is <laughs> Thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Today is a very, very special day for us. Uh, it's the day when we've taken the biggest step as a young five-year-old company that we've ever done into global markets. 
and we're setting in stone our commitment to India by putting our best foot forward, by building a flagship design uh, device that's designed just for India. And we couldn't do this, we love you too. <laughs> and really, we could not do this without the support and the encouragement from all of you. I've been in so many MeFan gatherings, and you guys are so amazing with your bug reports, with your suggestions, with your recommendations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you also uh, to the media colleagues who are here, to our business partners who have been such wonderful supporters. And let me also say a really special, huge thank you to the entire Xiaomi team. Yes. Your passion has absolutely no comparison. Thank you for being the most amazing, amazing family to me as well. All Xiaomi staff around the room, thank you. So. This is it for today. Uh, everyone, please go out and play with our products. Tell us what you think. Take photos, share them with your friends, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you, guys. Yeah.